Hello and welcome to the Good, Better, Best photo reading session with Dr. Paul Sheely, creator of the photo reading whole mind system. I'm Pete Bissonnette, Learning Strategies, and I've been photo reading right along with Paul since 1985. It seems forever ago, Paul, doesn't it? It does. And we really developed it for a client company long before we brought it out to the general public. So yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Now today, today is all about helping you overcome limitations that are keeping you from using the immense capacities of your brain to process information, and then to use that information to help make your life better, and also to achieve the goals and intentions that you may have. So Paul, are you ready? Oh, I am absolutely sad. I just love the idea of talking about good, better, best. You know, anything that we do to enhance our skills is going to be good. And there are some best practices that we can engage in to really accelerate the progress of our being able to, uh, our ability to use this spectacular technology and to think that it's been out for so many years. We've seen people in all walks of life, literally every age being able to use it. So we want to make sure everybody who's photo reader can get access to these abilities. Yeah, and you know, we really want to start by congratulating you for being here today because you're taking the time out of your day to, to, to learn how to better access that greater part of you, to break free from the, the limitations that you might have. So kudos for being here. So uh, let's get started by uh, getting a sense of where everybody is from. And we'd love to, to, um, to see what you have to say by clicking the chat button. So we have it only open to panelists, so it's easier to stay focused. But if you can type in where you're from, like maybe your city, state, country, we'd very much appreciate that. Uh, Dallas, Texas, Hawaii, Fremont, California, London, UK, Sydney, Lynchburg, Virginia, Jordan, Tokyo, Wyoming, Southern <laughs> Dublin, Australia, Italy, Princeton, Toronto, uh, Monroe, Toronto again, Chicago, Los Angeles. Paul, they're coming in from everywhere. So that's really nice to hear, isn't it? Wonderful. Yeah, from Europe, UK, all over, uh, down under, super. East yeah. Coast, West Coast, North, South. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so now how about if you type, uh, type in the answer to this question? If you could break free from your limitations, how might your life look and feel different? If you could um, break free from all the limitations, your unconscious mind, and really fully use the photo reading whole mind system, what would it look like in your life? Give us an idea, then we'll read some of those so that you know what other folks are looking for. It's always been interesting, Pete, when people come into the program, I say, if you could photo read what then would you do that's even more important than that? And it's really about oh, the goal yeah. behind the goal. That thing that's motivating you to be there, to achieve something meaningful in your life. Those are the sorts of things that we're really looking for. Some of the questions are some of the answers that are coming in, Paul. Uh, liberating, I'd give back to the community. Uh, I would be more articulate while discussing things. I'd consume more information, not be overloaded with material. I'd learn a new skill. I'd continue my learning. I would really bring it to manifestation. The grand thesis of painting, poetry, philosophy. Uh, all, lots of things are coming up. Kind of cool. Um, I'd read more. I'd learn more, increase my skills. Uh, although I own the program, it's still struggling, which is great because it's one of the things that we're here to, to talk about. And that person goes on to say, when I master it, I would become unstoppable because I could read more books. Absolutely true. So, um, Paul, before when we invited everybody to the session, we gave everybody the link to our YouTube channel with that video on the science frontiers. Now, that was a cool experience with Paul McKenna and at Cray Research oh, God, way back in the 1990s. Can you give us a little background on that? Yeah, Dr. Paul McKenna was arguably one of the most famous television personalities in the world. He had 280 million people watch his show every week. It was called The Hypnotic World of Paul McKenna. And when he finished that series, he wanted to do a documentary series which studied the remarkable capacities of the human mind. What's possible? What is human potential? What could be done if we could learn to tap in to those capacities? So he called us up and he said, I've got a team uh, on, at PBS here in the US. There was a team that did a show called Nova 
And he said he wanted that group of producers to do his documentary. And when he got them, he traveled all over the world with them. They made a stop here in Minnesota to our place in Wyzetta at the time and uh, did some filming with them. And Paul, what about your experience when you're over at Cray? Uh oh, did we just have Paul freeze on us? Well, while Paul's reconnecting or unfreezing, why don't you type in the chat any ahas or I insights that you got? created a system. Oh, Paul, backspace. Okay. Uh, you've been frozen for the last minute. Oh, it was so great. It was wonderful it was. material. Yeah. So where did I leave off? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was right after uh, you said that Paul McKenna came here to Minnesota to our okay. offices and wipes that up. So when he came here to film us, we, uh, we then brought him to Cray Research, which is the supercomputer company on the east side of the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. And the reason we brought him there is that one of the photo reading graduates was an absolute rabid fan of photo reading. And it changed his career completely. He was able to keep up and be ahead of all the latest research. He was running the virtual reality laboratory and he built a computer program that would put on the screen a random dot stereogram, a 3D magic eye kind of poster. And then we could load any text in front of that and decide how bright or dim either of those would be. So it looked, it was very cool. It looked like you're photo reading in a three-dimensional space with the words floating off of your computer screen about nine to 10 inches, the coolest thing ever. So we brought Paul over there to show him what we did. This time I remember what where Paul's getting frozen. So until Paul comes back, type in the chat what ahas you may have experienced, what you thought when you watched that video. It was back from the 1990s, but it was still kind of profound to think that, you know, we're going through photo reading on the screen at a million words a minute. Fixed machine. So, so Paul, we, we lost you again. Oh, what part, darn. And you know, the funny thing was, uh, Right when you left, I said I would remember where we are. I don't remember where we left where we last year because I just kept talking. <laughs> uh, so just backspace to if anybody remembers where we okay, lost. Okay, so we so did we get to the? Oh, we brought him reality? over to show him. Okay. Okay. So so we Thank brought you. him over. He did the three D photo reading, and we had already demonstrated we could go at. 600,000, 850,000, over a million words a minute. So when we did that, we put him on that and he photo read a novel, which is over 400 pages in seven seconds. So it was a spectacular demonstration. And then I asked him 25 questions to determine what his comprehension was with it. And as a result of that, he scored over 72 percentile on that comprehension test. So it was pretty spectacular for him. Now, it, during that show, he was referring to reading in a trance state. And I take umbrage with that. Obviously, he's appealing to the audience that watched him do hypnosis. But he and I both understand that it's not about trance, it's about the power of mind. Whatever we can do to eliminate the limitations of the conscious mind and let the true power of the non-conscious mind show up, that's what we've got. And that's what photo reading is. It's a protocol for using these spectacular powers that are natural to all of us. And you know, one thing I'd like to say too is that you don't need to have the random dot stereogram on your screen in order to get to the super high speeds. That's something that Keith was doing there, and it was very cool to be able to experience that. But that's just about um, getting into photo focus when you're photo reading. So you can photo read any book on the internet. 
Well, the big thing things. about it is you can flip pages, 400 pages in seven seconds, and there's no finger on this planet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't lick your finger fast enough. It would heat up so hard it would probably burn. So yeah, that was the other big thing about computer photo reading. Yeah. Okay, so Paul, a lot of folks have sent us in questions um, that they'd like you to address. So uh, can I go ahead and just start Please. firing them away? Love it. Okay, uh, first one is, and I know everybody's going to love this one, which activation is the better method to use? And how do I know which of the activation techniques to use at any given time? That's wonderful. You know, there's, uh, there's several responses to that. There are a number of techniques that we use in activation. There is a bridge state between having photo read something and activating something, and that's called post viewing. So very often when we go back through the book for a few minutes, pull out trigger words and decide what it is that we're going to be activating, formulating those questions, Pete, actually stimulates the brain to get access to that information. So it's, it has to do with our neural network and throwing in a stimulus that the brain recognizes. It then begins to bring it forward. It's called incubation, but what can happen also if you sleep on it is you'll dream about it or in the next morning have insight about it that you didn't even know that you knew. There's a great story in the photo reading book about Dr. Jerry Wellick, who spontaneously activated two books to give a speech on, and he wrote the whole speech in his dream state. So he just woke up in the morning and made a mind map of what he had come up with, had the whole thing. So that's a very important first step, if you will. Now, once you know what you're going for, you could either be more general, or you could be laser focused. You have something specific you want to get to. Super reading and dipping is ideal. If you're a more sequential learner and you want to make sure you didn't miss anything, you may doubt your intuition a little bit, skittering is really excellent because it's very sequential. You go paragraph by paragraph and you can easily say, this is not it, this is not it, there, this is it. You can grab it and make a mind map of it. Some people ask, you know, do I have to mind map? And the answer is no, but mind mapping is very helpful to really be able to lock it in at a conscious level. So later, six months from now, whenever you need it, it's very much available to you at that moment. So uh, my recommendation is, if you're more intuitively oriented and can trust your intuition to bring you exactly to where you need to be, which everybody has the ability to do, but not everybody trusts it, use super reading dipping. If you know the section you want to go to, you want to make sure you haven't missed anything, skittering is excellent. So, you know, Pete, before skittering came into the photo reading program, Dr. J. Michael Bennett took the photo reading course. I said, so what did you think of activation? He said, I loved it. He said, but I don't do uh, super reading and dipping. <laughs> he said, well, what do you do? He said, well, it's called skittering. I wrote about it in my book for managers, uh, efficient reading for managers. I said, well, can we use it in the photo reading course? He said, absolutely. And so we joint ventured with Dr. Bennett from the University of Minnesota added that component. And historically, Pete, very interesting. I'll ask a group of photo readers taking the course, how many of you prefer super reading and dipping? Half the hands go up. How many of you prefer skittering? Half the hands go up. I mean, it's very evenly divided. So what's the best one? It really depends on what it is you're activating for and then what your personal preference is. Now, when you're done with your activation of all the things that are more surgical or laser that you're going for, and you wanna make sure you have absolutely everything, you would rapid read it, go from the beginning to the end. But as I say, most students and many business people will never use it 
because they don't need to. Now, if you're doing a novel, it's great to photo read it and then just go to rapid reading because you're more engaged. You're really into the language. You're moving through it extremely fast and it feels like you're just plodding through it. It's so excellent. Novels that would take people normally 10 hours to read, they can finish it in a couple of hours and know it better than if they had spent all that time. Your microphone's off. Paul, you mentioned Mike Bennett. Yes. Tell the story about how he became associated with us. <laughs> sure. Well, <clears throat> I had heard. I went to the University of Minnesota St. Paul campus, and he was a professor of rhetoric at the St. Paul campus. And I had heard when I started to, to develop photo reading that there was this crusty old ex-Marine, ex-boxer who hated everything speed reading, just didn't want to give it the time of day, thought it was all a bunch of hooey. Okay. Paul, he called, he told people it was malarkey. Malarkey, that was the word, thanks. And so um, when the Channel 9 News, was it? Uh, Gary Rebstock did an interview with us everybody he talked to, to try to get some contrary opinion about food reading, he couldn't find any, everybody loved it. So he said, isn't there anyone I could talk to? Some expert somewhere, I said, I've got a guy, I heard about him, why don't you give him a call? Dr. J. Michael Bennett, at the University of Minnesota. So, so Channel 9 News sent him a copy of the book and Dr. Bennett took a look at it and Gary Rebstock arrives at Dr. Bennett's office, camera on the shoulder of the cameraman, knocks on the door. Dr. Bennett opens the door and he's holding the book and says, you know, this guy's really onto something. <laughs> and Gary called us up afterwards and said, he gave it an endorsement too. And you know, Pete, you probably remember this. People have watched that news clip and thought it was a setup, thought it was bogus, because it was just too, too wonderful. What was interesting, Paul, is that it was the, uh, what is it, the it, was, it was the investigative team, and they came to do it. It was sweeps week. They wanted to prove that photo reading was a hoax. And it was to air on a Wednesday, and on Friday late afternoon, he called to say that he was probably going to pull the plug on it because he couldn't get anybody to say anything negative uh, or the other side on photo reading. And then it was Monday morning he called up and he says, okay, I thought about it over the weekend. Who says everything has to be bad or there has to be a negative side to everything? We're going with it as it is. Get ready for the phones to ring off the hook. And then on Wednesday, yeah. Well, the other thing is that normally one of these stories lasts three minutes. And he did six, six minutes, minutes yeah. on it. It was crazy. And Wednesday he called and he says, normally we tell people just to call our office, um, to call us to get more information. But we're going to put your screen, your telephone number on the screen because we don't want to get any of the calls. Just make sure you have plenty of people answering the phone. And when that, ordered all, uh, when that aired, every phone in our office lit up nonstop for hours. It was quite the wonderful experience. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I don't know. I don't know if you remember this. There's one piece that he did that um, was not in the final piece. Is when he gave a book to me to, for me to photo read, and then he asked me questions on it, and it was on uh, weather for aviation. And so I sat at my desk, and he had the cameras going, and I photo read the book and all that, and I turned upside down and photo read it again, and I gave it back to him, and then he. Um, started to answer a couple questions, uh, asked me a couple questions, and I gave him the, the proper answer for it. It was really cool how the answers just popped into my head because I only spent, you know, a couple minutes with the book. And then he said, wait a minute, wait, what's wrong? And the book itself was, you know how it's, it's put together in different signatures? The book was assembled wrong by the book printer. And so all the pages were out of order. 
And I had gotten all the answers right, even though the pages were out of order. And he just rolled his eyes so hard on that one. It was just beautiful. It's wonderful. The, the idea that you can activate that quickly after doing a book, I think is really important because for most people, especially beginning photo readers, we say, you know, get away from it for 20 minutes or so, let it incubate, then come back, do your activation steps. But, you know, there's plenty of reasons why you could just head right into it. And the stories have been fantastic over the years. I mean, all these years we've been doing it, obviously we've got a lot of great stories, but it's spectacular to know that you really can rely on it. Short notice, right now you're heading into a meeting, here, quick glance over this, let's go, you can do that. Yeah, exactly. And when it comes for me, photo reading a book, and I want to get um, a pretty good conscious understanding of the book, I will photo read it today, sleep on it, and activate it tomorrow. It's really a good way to go. In fact, after the photo reading course, I often say, get a couple of books, <clears throat> photo reading, photo read one today, activate it tomorrow photo read the second one, activate that the next day. And so you're always kind of leapfrogging that way. I remember one woman was so mad about it. She said, you know, I went to the store, bought these two books, spent like $28 on this one book, got it home. I was going to do this technique where I photo read it one day, activate the next. So she photo read it. And the next day she didn't want to activate it. And she thought, oh, great. I spent all this money. I learned this course, take the whole weekend. I buy a $28 book and now I don't want to read it. What great, what a great course is this? So she got her other book out and photo read that. She couldn't wait to activate it. The next day she just devoured it. She loved every second of it. And she thought, okay, now I get it all my life people would give me books and tell me I had to read them. And now I'm picking the book. If I don't want to read it, I don't have to read it. And I knew I didn't want to read it. And that's so cool. You know, people go to libraries and just go brr, 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 to see what kind of resonance they have with a book to know which book they want to take home and spend more time with it. Same thing, I say, if you have 10 books, photo read them all, but then only activate the ones that resonate with you. And very often it's only two out of a stack of 10. Yeah. So Paul, um, a lot of people have asked about comprehension. Great. How long does it take before I start to get really, really good comprehension from using the photo reading whole mind system? Well, my sense is you have to be able to comprehend immediately. Now the question is, for what purpose? So we talk about four levels of comprehension. When you get the book and you preview it, now you have an awareness, that's first level comprehension. Now you photo read the book and there's a sense of familiarity, almost like you drove through a town once 30 years ago and now you're driving through it again and there's a sense of familiarity. You know, there's, this looks familiar somehow, but there's a sense of resonance. You got it. You've got it. Now you start to activate it. And that's where you're building more conscious comprehension, what we would call knowledge. And then the next level of comprehension is what we call expertise. And that is generally where we're applying it to whatever is that is essential for us. Goals that we have work that we're doing, skills that we're trying to acquire, knowledge to speak intelligently on a subject or in an industry. As a consultant to many industries, is very helpful for me in that regard. So the idea is you have to determine what level of comprehension you need. So it's actually one of the first things we do when we're preparing a book, we have to determine our purpose. And that means how much time we want to spend and what level of comprehension are we going for? Now, I will say, Pete, just in general, when people come into the photo reading class for the first time, they ask, well, um, am I going to know this book after I flip the pages? 
And I say, well, yes, you will at some level, but you have to determine what level of comprehension you need. And the only way that a person thinks they can know that they've comprehended it is if they understand and could repeat verbatim 100% of the book. Well, that's not true at all. And in fact, state boards for law, for medicine, you name it. You know what you need to successfully pass a state board? 76%. And many people go through their degrees thinking they have to know 100%, you don't. So you have to decide what is it you need to move to that next level of application. So you should be able to get that within minutes. Um, certainly a book like the photo reading book, you could talk intelligently about it with the first few minutes of playing with it. 15, 20 minutes, you should be able to go. Now, Pete, you and I have done a lot of demonstrations of photo reading in front of big groups, on TV, on radio. Other photo reading instructors have done that as well. Graduates of the program have been called on to TV stations to demonstrate the effectiveness of it, just like Paul McKenna did after, you know, on international TV. So the idea is that you and I would often say, Give us a choice of a book. Let us take a book that we're interested in, because that helps, but not essential. Give us a book that we're interested in and let us have 30 minutes or 45 minutes, and then you can ask any question that you, question that you want. And that seems to be a really good formula. You can go through all of the steps and do quite a bit of activation in that amount of time. And you, you know, Paul, speaking of the radio shows, I remember one of the radio shows I did, uh, they gave me this one book to photo read. And then um, I went into a side studio and for 30 minutes to activate it. And they gave me a high sign saying it was time to come back into the studio. And I was activating the book and I was feeling I was getting absolutely nothing from the book. It was like, oh God, what, what's this book about? Then in that last couple of seconds, then all of a sudden, like the whole book came together and I went into the studio. I answered all their questions amazingly accurately. And then that actually brings us to the five day photo reading test or the five day photo reading process that we send out that email every Monday. The relationship there is what happens on the radio when we're doing those, we're giving a short period of time and we have to perform. The same thing with the five day photo reading um, experience. If you take a half an hour with the photo reading to, with the book, to photo reading activated, and no more than a half an hour, you're going to be amazed how much you get from the book. You come back the next day, you do the same thing. What I found myself personally is that if I spend more than that half an hour to an hour or whatever, I get a whole lot, lot less comprehension, a whole lot less results than if I break it up on multiple days, because I think it puts a, a little bit of pressure on. It's like that being in the studio where you have to perform. Also, there's a diminishing return. You know, a lot of people keep pushing, pushing, pushing when their mind is already switched off saying, you know, there isn't more here. I don't want any more of it right now. But we're so used to going to school and getting pushed, forced to comply to some kind of test or protocol that somebody is putting on us and it's not necessarily brain compatible. So we're learning to work with the spectacular brain mind that we have in order to get the best result for the situation that we find ourselves in. So that 30 minute, 45 minute window seems to be really good for a lot of folks. Yeah. Paul, a lot of people have also asked too about how do you, What's the best way to activate a highly technical book to get significant comprehension from it? Is there a strategy that you would recommend? Absolutely. And this is what I give to students who are studying a complex textbook over a period of a semester. So what I say is you get the syllabus, you get your book from the bookstore before the course ever starts and you photo read the whole thing. Just flip, 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 flip. And you know, some college textbooks are 450, 650 pages long. So it's a pretty good session just flipping pages. 
Now, when you go to class and the professor says, all right, I want you to study chapters three and four, we're going to be discussing them, do the questions at the end of the chapters, and that's going to be what we're getting into next week. So people will go home and photo readers will, they've already photo read the whole thing. What they'll do is they'll preview chapter three, photo read chapter three. Then when it comes time to formulating the questions, they don't have to do it because questions are already specified at the end of the chapter. So they'll then super read and dip or skitter to answer just those questions. So where is it in here? Got it. Super read, dip, skitter those paragraphs, answer the questions, write them out. Now, when you're all done with that, close it up, take a little break, go back, do chapter four, same thing. Prepare, photo read chapter four, activate for the questions, now go to class the next day. Now it's incubating again. Everything's making the connections. You go to class and what is class discussion? It's an activation technique and very naturalistically brings together a lot that's really been locked in there now. So this is also an important part of what we do in the photo reading retreat, Pete, is we have people really working with each other to challenge them around questions that are important for a book that they're studying. And so most people will say, I said more than I thought I even knew about it. Well, that's because when, you, and when your brain actively goes for the information that's within you, it pulls it out of that dark web of your non-conscious mind. You know, it really allows you to bring it forward. So at the class, you've done all this activation, you do your mind maps of the lecture, you see what the professor says that she thinks are the most important things that you have to know in these two chapters. Great. Now ask yourself, was there anything she talked about that I didn't think I knew? And if there's any doubt, you go back and you rapid read that chapter which means start to finish faster and slower, depending on your level of comprehension. So you know that you know it and you've got your mind maps to do the studying of it when it comes time to the exam. So if you think about it, highly technical books are broken up into highly technical chapters and you take each chapter in this way, allowing yourself the opportunity to build this foundation of activation after you have photo read the entire thing. And so you really, um, I think doing mind maps is very helpful when people are doing highly technical books, I recommend that they take their mind map that they've made, fold it up, put it in the back of the book. So later, if they want to remember something that they, they did activate and they wanna make sure they remembered it right, they just open it up pull out their mind map, they know they got it. Yeah, I love the mind mapping too. I'll, when I my map book, I'll put it in the book and I'm really surprised how quickly everything comes back to me. Yeah. And I remember back when we were first um, getting going with this, I was not a huge fan of mind mapping. And um, so I would just, you know, take all my notes in the linear form. And then one day I figured, well, I better get with the program here since, you know, this is where I am. And so I started to mind map. And I remember one day about maybe six months, a year later, I had to go back to a file to notes I had taken that were part linear and part mind mapping. And the linear notes took forever to come together and the mind map notes came together just like that. So then I switched over to mind mapping for my, when I, when I go through photo reading books. I don't mind map every photo reading book. It kind of depends on what I want to get out of it. But when there's something I really want to carry forward stuff, then I'll let the details, I'll do the mind mapping with it. I agree. And, and uh, Peter Russell talked about mind mapping. He says, once you've mind mapped it, you have a perfect memory of it after that. So very easy to activate that memory by checking out the mind map. Now, one of the things that um, happened with me is, is fairly similar. I started a master's degree in adult, <clears throat> adult learning and human development technologies in 1985. And it was in that 
first year that I got a call from our colleague, Peter Klein, saying, hey, I'm working with IDS and they want a speed reading class based on accelerated learning. Are you interested? I said, yeah, I could use it as a project for my master's degree. And uh, at the time that I was doing my master's degree, I was taking linear notes when the professor would write things on the boards. I'd just copy them in the same way. And I thought, what am I doing? I teach my mapping. Why am I taking linear notes? It doesn't make any sense. Well, that's the important thing is what's your habit, right? We have a tendency to fall back on old habits, not because they're better, but because we're just familiar with them. And to develop a habit of photo reading is the thing that we really want to bring forward in our session today. There's good, bad, or best. People say, you know, I really need to feel confident in my photo reading. So I'll say, well, how many books have you photo read? Well, I'm not confident I know photo reading well enough. So there's no win here. The only way you're gonna gain confidence in your photo reading is to photo read. And the only way to know that you know it and to demonstrate that you've got it is to use the technique. So people say, well, it's gonna take a lot of practice, isn't it? And I said, don't practice it. Do you have some books you want to read? Oh yeah, just use it, just use it. All the steps are laid out. You absolutely know the steps, just follow the steps. It's a protocol. And when you follow that sequence, the whole brain allows you to get what you need in the time that you have at a level of comprehension you need. Paul, I love the advice that Brian Osborne gives. Uh, he created our Oracine course in the yeah. new Four Elements Manifestation. And that is every time you uh, notice something that you can attribute to your photo reading whole mind system, anytime you have one of those experiences, say, more like that, please. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. And that gets, sets up the expectations. There's a lot to that, Pete. I have honestly, I've told a lot of people this over the years, that really what we're doing is we're establishing a new level of communication with our non-conscious mind. Photo reading is one way in which we can demonstrate that interaction with the spectacular resource that's within us. There are a lot of other ways, and that's what we've been doing with learning strategies since we first started the, the company. And Photo reading is just such a beautiful way to give people more access to this vast resource within. Somebody came up to me from a company we were teaching, I think it was 3M at the time. He looked at me and said, this isn't just about reading, is it? <laughs> and I said, well, obviously there's a lot more within us that we need to gain access to. He said, very clever. This is kind of a subversive activity to get people to use their non-conscious mind, isn't it? I said, no, <laughs> it's all about reading. Yeah. Uh, so Paul, you mentioned the boat reading retreat a couple of minutes ago, and yeah. we announced that we're doing it in November earlier in the year. Can you talk a little bit about the retreat and what folks might be getting from it? Yeah. The key behind doing any retreat I mean, let's, let's just think about it. What are we doing? We're retreating from the world that's putting all this pressure on us to go to a time with ourselves. Now, you may have heard this statistic that if a person spends 15 minutes a day, five days a week, in a period of a year, it's almost two 40-hour weeks. Now, if you spend that 15 minutes every day reading on a subject matter of your choice, you could be one of the world's leading experts within a couple of years. Well, I say, if you spend that 15 minutes using the photo reading whole mind system, you'll become a world's leading expert much faster than that. So the, when do we create time that's just devoted to the pursuit of knowledge and skills that we long for, that we dream to have. And that's really what the retreat does. It creates a safe container 
so that every day we get to do a deep dive into the power that your mind has to not just extract information from the world of literature, but to really develop the knowledge and skills that will propel our success going forward. And you know, when I talk about goals, I usually talk about it in four ways from the diamond feng shui concept of the four best directions. We've got success, we've got health, we've got relationships, and we've got growth. And that could be wisdom, personal growth, spiritual development, you name it. So people come in with piles of books that they have determined will help them in four major growth areas that they're interested in. What is it about your success? Is it career? Is it money? What is it that gives you success? Let's explore it. Let's do a deep dive. Let's gain access to what you need to know. Health. What are the breakthroughs that are going to allow you to live a healthy life long into the late years of your existence? How can we do that? And getting started now is the best time, right? And then relationships. How would you like to enhance your communication, delegation, management, leadership? What is it? What is communication? What are relationships to? Maybe it's intimate relationships. Maybe it's working with a teenage child. And what is it for you? And then growth. You decide what's it going to be for you. And wouldn't it be nice if every year we could set our chief aims in each one of these four and then have a way of making breakthrough progress? Well, that's what we can do because we have the books that we photo read. We've got a wide variety of authors that are going to be speaking to us through our food reading, we're going to activate that dialogue between these authors and our own non-conscious mind. We're going to make sure that we do direct learning. So our non-conscious mind will be automatically and spontaneously generating the new behaviors that will help us get to our goal objective. So it's very exciting and everybody who has done it I and mean, we've got a film on it it's spectacular right people in just a matter of a week just have spectacular breakthroughs that can help transform the way they live their lives yeah paul as a matter of fact you mentioned the film uh, one of the short videos in a youtube channel and the yeah. photo reading playlist it was actually done at one of the photo reading retreats so you can see the types of experiences that people had there um, speaking of the retreat, we have more questions for you, Paul, but I want to go through some of the logistics of the retreat first. Yeah. Uh, but to get ready, to, the two questions that we're going to come back with, do meditators get faster and more profound results compared to non-meditators? And also, how can I be sure that just flipping the pages is really working? And so be ready for those. I'll be back in a second here. So um, let me put up a screen here that shows the... Um, the information about the retreat. So it's coming up in um, October, or excuse me, November, and we'll be meeting live on Zoom for five consecutive days. It's Wednesday through Sunday and November 10th through the 14th. Each day to be from 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. U.S. Central time. That seems to be a very perfect time period for people. And the tuition is 10 payments of $150. So what you can do is you can place a $150 deposit now. And to do that, you can just go to that URL that's on the screen. And um, then with that, you can, um, and I'm going to put it in the, yeah, here it is. I'm going to put it in the chat here. And uh, that'll automatically put the enrollment in your shopping cart. You, that'll put your deposit in the shopping cart. And the other thing too is that we have the way the guarantee is set up, you can cancel any time up until the day before the event begins. What that means is you can go ahead and put in your deposit now. And if for any reason you have to cancel whatsoever, go ahead and cancel. You get to you'll get a full refund on everything. So go ahead and put in your uh, $150 deposit. And then the nine remaining payments will be charged to your card once a month after that, uh, after the retreat begins in, um, in the first part of November. And if you've already been to one of the photo reading retreats, the one that we did in 2004 and 2007, and the other one was 2012, 
you're going to save $300 on it. So we'll reward you for coming back for it. And we have another reward for you. If you make your deposit in the next 24 hours, we'll give you a $50 credit. We'll take $50 actually off your last payment for it. And so that's to reward you for actively working on your photo reading skills and your photo reading abilities. And if you've already enrolled in the retreat, just send us an email before five o'clock tomorrow, that's five o'clock on August 17th, to customer service at learningstrategies.com. And we'll give you a $50 credit. We'll take 50 bucks off the last payment. So if you've already enrolled in the retreat, which I know a lot of people are who are on the obsession now, we'll give you that $50 credit. And if you sign up now, until five o'clock tomorrow, we'll give you that $50 credit. Paul, any other questions be, uh, or any other ideas about the retreat before we go on? Um, well, it's a collaborative learning environment. And so it's really fun because we get to meet with people from all over the world, just like on this call today, people coming in from all over the place. And you'll find that there is a similarity to everyone who's really interested in up-leveling their skills. When we had live retreats, people would gather. One thing that they said, well, there are two things. First of all, all of the hotels we ever worked in, they said, we just love people who come to learning strategies events. They're the sweetest people. But the other thing is, you know how you could be talking about something that you're quite passionate about and people look at you like you're, you've grown a third head, you know, <laughs> what a year. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anything you're talking about. But as soon as you come into retreat, you instantly have a cadre of people, a cohort, a group that is supportive, collaborative, and is here ready to help you up level your skills. And they get it. They get where you're coming from and they get where you're going. So there's a lot to that, Pete. Yeah. There's another thing too. Paul, did you notice the URL that we have for registering for putting in a deposit? Be so learning with strategies. Paul. Be with Paul. That's one of the big benefits of this program too. We could have done retreat, but it's not really about the retreat. It's about you coming together to work on your photo reading with Paul, the master of photo reading. If you're going to study with anybody, you want to be with him. If you want to take your skills to the next level. So absolutely be here for that reason. Well, uh, you use that word work, and I want to suggest that oh, we working. may be actually playing more rather than working hard. I think we all have transformative purposes, and I think most of us have high, hard goals that we're working on. And if you apply the proper mindset to getting where you want to go, you move into what we call a flow state. And that flow is what we're going with. Is it work? Well, yeah. Is it play? Yeah. But it's really about getting in a flow state to really connect with the potential that's within you and apply it to where you want to go. Sweet. So, Paul, we only have, we have less than 15 minutes um, for the hour. So let's get back into some of the questions. Sound good? Yeah, you said something about meditators. Yeah, do, med do meditators readers? get faster, more profound results compared to non-meditators using photo reading? No, they don't. However, what I will say, it depends on the type of meditation. I've studied meditation for 45 years. The thing that we're doing, and I'm showing everybody how to do it in a much more rapid way, is we're up-leveling the mind. We're up regulating the brain from the old brain centers that are in the freeze mode or the fight or flight mode or the critical thinking mode. We're moving into a part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex that allows us to see the big picture, to make connections, to open up an intelligence and intuition that allows us to get where we're going much more efficiently. And so if your practice of meditation has shown you how to do that, then yes, it'll help. It will improve your ability to get the noise out and really focus on the signal that you're going for that's going to help you make progress. So the answer is a yes and no. I'm going to show you how to meditate in two minutes or less more effectively than most people who spend 20 or 30 minutes in meditation. 
week. Okay, next question. How can I be sure that just flipping the pages is really working? Okay, so here's the thing. The, if you ask, is it working? The question I have is, what is the it? Is it the photo reading? Is it your eyeballs? Is it your brain? And what we know is if the it is your brain, then yes, it's working because you have a pre-conscious processor. It's never not working for you. What we're using is this thing called the photo reading whole mind system. It's a step-by-step -step fashion, a step-by-step -step program that allows you to make the best use of that pre-conscious processor. So we bypass the critical faculties of the mind that have all the limitations and we step into this much more resourceful part of us. Now, once we have pre-consciously processed it, now your non-conscious mind has it. So how can you know that it has it? See, that's another interesting question. How do you know that flipping has done anything? It has to, you can get it to register on, the, on a brain scan, it'll do that. But how do you know that your pre-conscious processor and your non-conscious mind has what you need? The only way to know it is by activating. And so a lot of times, Pete, we invite people to set up a test, take two books, similar kind of content, even similar authors, go through one book without the photo reading whole mind system, go through it with the photo reading whole mind system. Now, some people, you remember in the early days, Pete, how people would say, you know, I got a lot from soup reading and I got a lot from skittering. And I got a lot from rapid reading and I got a lot from previous, but the photo reading said, I just don't, I just don't know if it's doing anything for me. So we realized why that was. And as a result of that, we told people, okay, when you preview, you only get a minute or you don't get to preview at all. Just photo read it, just photo read it and then start activating. And what people immediately came back with is, wow, what a difference that makes. It can really tell. Well, what was, what was wrong? Well, why weren't they getting the result before? Because they'd get the book and they'd start previewing it. And I'd say, well, how long did you preview it? preview it for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. That's not previewing. That's reading. And when you read it, you put it into a part of your brain that's short-term memory. Now you flip the pages and you think, what was the book about? Where are you going to look? You're going to look at that place where you already represented it. And most people would say, well, I could have gotten that from just previewing. We said, you did. <laughs> so if you eliminate previewing and just photo reading and start activating, you're going to prove to yourself. And I'll tell you, I, I think there's about five or six different tasks that we're going to be able to use to help people know the difference that it makes. Now, there is um, a story of a fellow in Florida who was a retired dentist and he would get a date with somebody in his community and went over at her house, he'd say, uh, say, have you read that book that's on your coffee table there? Yeah, yeah, I read it. How long did you spend with it? Well, 10, 12 hours. He said, I'd like, I'd like to use a technique I learned and take just an hour with that book and talk to you about it. And you tell me if I got it. And he'd always get a second date that way <laughs> because it was a great test for him to know that he knew it because somebody who had read it cover to cover could test them and prove that he got it in one tenth of the time. That's a great story. I love that one. Yeah. Uh, another question for you, Paul. Yeah. Um, how do I get in state while photo reading in public and not look like a crazy person? Well, if looking like a crazy person is that big of a deal, then maybe you should 
put your shirt inside out and put your feet shoes on the wrong feet and wear different colored socks and realize that nobody really cares. But if feeling like a crazy person, not so much appearing like one, but feeling like one is a distraction for you, then the best way to do it is what my son used to do when he was in grade school. He'd go like this. Flip, 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 flip. And that's all it took. Deep breath in, three, two, one, tangerine on the back ahead and go. That's all it takes. You don't have to do any more than that. Now, what's really crazy is when you're in the middle seat in an airplane and you're photo reading upside down and backwards, that's when people really start asking questions. And it's a great conversation starter, by the way, because people want to know, are you, are you actually reading that book? Yeah, it's pretty fun. Paul, well, we got a question here from um, someone who's signed up for the retreat. Um, we have five minutes to go. Okay. And you, at, on the hour, you're talking with Ken Honda. We're doing a new paraliminal called Happy Money. And he's the author from Japan that you've been working with. As a matter of fact, you were in the studio recording it with him this morning, weren't you? He wasn't there. We're going to record it. I recorded my version of it. I'm going to record with him as soon as we can. And that's going to be in September. Perfect. Okay. So here's the question. What's the best way to develop my photo reading skills to get consistent results? For those like me who will participate in the retreat, what do you recommend to make the most of this opportunity? And what can I do in the meantime to get better prepared for the retreat? I need a plan. Excellent. I love that. And you know, we are going to send a plan to everybody who registers so that they know how to come fully prepared, but let me give you an idea. If you go to the photo reading book and look up the chapter on syntopic reading, it talks about building your personal library of books that you're going to activate. So we're gonna do a syntopic reading session every day. And it's really powerful because you'll activate three to five books on a single topic every single day. And you can do the whole thing in about 45 minutes when we do it as a group, but it's really, really strong. And it, if you could think about the four areas, success, health, relationships, and growth, and then pick 10 books that you would be interested in for each of those four topics, then what we're going to do is photo read all of those and then we're going to activate them. So you're gonna activate a fraction of, the, of those, you know, if you pick 10 or if you pick 20, we'll probably, you know, do three or four of them out of that pile. So that's the best way to think about your goal. Think about the breakthroughs that you would like, what your life would be like if you, new and we're practicing everything that could advance you to your goal and then select your library you'll be golden for the retreat perfect perfect paul you only got two minutes you have to get on the phone with ken so yes. um we're gonna say goodbye to you i have one more a couple more things i'd like to talk with everybody about when you bug off uh thanks for taking time today um, really very much appreciate that it's a great pleasure and Remember also the good, better, best idea for our program here. So it's good that you have a book. It's if all you did is flip it, excellent. That's all you did, even if you didn't drop in the state. But all you did is took a breath in, gently exhale, and flip the pages of the book. That's good. What's better is if you could get into state, photo read it through go through the closing affirmations and post view. Excellent. Now what you've done is you formulated questions because that's going to help your brain start activating even if you didn't do anything else with the physical book. And what's best is the next day, you take a few minutes to activate it. Start with 20 minutes. If that's all you did, awesome. You're going to develop so much confidence in yourself 
so much success with the system, you'll be able to demonstrate with competence in any area that you choose to focus your reading time. Thanks a bunch, Pete. Thanks okay, for hosting thank you, Paul. us. Peace and blessing, everyone. We'll see you very soon. Bye for Sounds now. Sounds good. Okay, now that Paul is gone, let's talk about him. Oh, he's, oh there he is. Now he's gone. Uh, actually, um, let's do talk about him because what I'd like to do in these uh, final seconds is if you can throw into the chat your love for Paul, um, just the things that you appreciate about him and what he brings to the table, what he brings to all of us, I'll then copy and paste that out of chat, make sure that he sees it. So if you have comments that you'd like to give to him, please do that. And then what I'll also do now is I will put back up on the screen the information about the retreat so that you can, if you decide that you want to um, do that, by all means, you're going to uh, just go to learningstrategies.com, be with Paul again. It's a Wednesday through Sunday event, November 10th through the 14th from 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Tuition is 10 payments for 150 bucks. You're putting a deposit in now. The rest we will charge. Uh, we'll start monthly payments on November 3rd. That's really easy. If you sign up now, if you do your deposit in the next 24 hours, we'll give you a $50 credit that comes off of the um, last payment. And if you've already enrolled in it, then just send an email to customer service at learningstrategies.com and they'll take $50 off the last payment too. And let me see, is there anything else on that that I'd like to say? I think that's it. If you have any questions, um, throw them into chat now about the voting retreat or just call the office or send an email to customer service at learningstrategies.com. Be happy to help you. So that's it for now. I'll leave the chat going for a little bit. Thank you very much. And we will see you again sometime.